It's been a pretty quiet week down on the Florida South Gulf Coast. And I know you've all been wondering what we wear under these choir robes. Just regular street clothes. Well, except the base section. <laughs> Think of them Scotsmen in their kilts. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to tell you all about a friend of mine, uh, Brother Buford. Uh, he's in the ministry. Uh, you know how the ministers are. They, they have more pious lives than the rest of us. They, they, they live, well, I hate to say holier than thou, but this, this is Brother Buford we're talking about. And he's, he's the preacher over at the, the uh, First Self-Righteous Church of the Holier Than Thou. <laughs> anyway, anyway, the other day, just to show you that ministers are human beings, Buford and his wife Cora May were having a little tiff. I'm, well, not just a little tiff, they were having an all-out spat. Cora May was complaining that Buford just didn't, didn't hold up his end around the house. You know, the least he could do would be to, to pick up a dust rag every now and then, or maybe vacuum the bedroom, or maybe, <laughs> heaven forbid, wash a dish. Anyway, they were getting ready for a big church doings. It was a formal affair. I mean, Buford even had out his best clip-on tie and best jacket. And they were getting ready to go, and Cora May said, well, the least you could do, Buford, is zip up my dress for me. Well, she was wearing one of them gowns, you know, that has a zipper that runs all the way from Osprey down to Putta Gorda, if you, if you know what I mean, <laughs> if you get my drift. Anyway, Buford decided to have himself a little bit of fun. He goes over, and he helps her out with her zipper, and he goes, zip. Cora May said, you did not break my zipper. Tell me you didn't break my zipper, Buford. Well, Cora May, I'll fix it, I'll fix it. We've got a few more minutes before we have to go, I'll fix it. So he went and got some pliers and some duct tape. <laughs> As you can guess, it was a lost cause, and they didn't have time for her to find something else to, to wear. So she finally gave in and just threw a shawl over, the, over it. It was a shawl her grandma had made. It was nice and pretty and everything, but this is Florida we're talking about. In June, Cora May was just beside herself. They got to the big dinner at the church, and they walked in. Cora May's wearing her shawl, and all the other ladies are saying, Oh, my Cora May, that's a lovely shawl you got on. And she says, well, yeah, my granny made it for me, and it, it, I think it's awful pretty, and I knew it was going to be chilly out tonight. <laughs> anyway, they went through the evening, and they went back out to the car to go home, and they got in the car, and it was really frigid in the car, if you know what I mean, if you get my drift. Cora May said, I have never been so humiliated in my entire life. And Buford said, well, Honey, the women all said that they loved your, your shawl. And she said, well, of course they lied. They're good Christians. <laughs> so anyway, they headed home, and they did not pass go. They did not collect $200, if you know what I mean, if you get my drift. They ended up in bed, him on her, his side, her on her side, and they slept. Next morning... Cora May got up early, and she decided she was going to have her way. And she said, Buford, wake up. Huh, what? She said, Buford, I am going into town. I'm going to buy myself two new gowns with accessories, and I'm going to put them on your credit card. Buford says, well, if that's the kind of steward to the church you want to be, you just go right ahead and do that. He wasn't thinking real clearly, talking to her like that. But anyway... She goes into town, and she buys herself her nice new dress. She gets some accessories, and then she decides to stop at the beauty parlor. And she got herself a facial, a manicure, even did the pedicure. And she was feeling pretty good by the time she got home. She was even to the point where she was forgiven to Buford. And she got out of the car and grabbed her bags, and she saw Buford over under his pickup truck working on it. And she could just see him from about here down. And she decided, well, 
I'm just going to have a little fun at his expense for a change. So she goes over and she reaches down and she grabs his zipper and zip, 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 And she picks up her bags and she goes on in the house. And she sets her bags down in the kitchen and she goes walking out into the Florida room and there sits Buford watching NASCAR. And she says, ah, ah. Buford says, what, what, honey? She says, what are you doing in here and who is out there under your pickup truck? He says, well, that's Bubba from next door. He said, he's changing his oil. He might as well change mine, too. And she said, oh, my God, oh, my God, you've got to fix this. You've got to fix it. And he said, what, honey, what's the matter? And she told him what she'd done. He says, you did not. Yeah, honey, I'm afraid I did. He says, oh, we're going to have to move in with your pop up in the popka. So Cora May says, well, you get out there and you fix this. So he goes out to his pickup truck and he says, uh, Bubba, hey, Bubba. No answer. Bubba? And he looks under there and Bubba is out cold. So he pulls him out and says, Bubba, Bubba, what's the matter? Wakes him up. And Bubba comes to him. He says, huh, what? He said, Buford, you wouldn't believe what happened. I was just putting one last turn on your oil filter. And some woman come by here, and she grabbed my zipper and started messing with it. And I was so surprised, I raised up to see who it was, and I smacked my head on your manifold. <laughs> he says, I'd sure love to know who that woman was. And Buford says, well, I know who it was. I seen her, and she lives way down the street. Problem solved. <laughs>